So perhaps you're excited, you're thinking this is a good opportunity and you are getting ready to start shooting stock video, but you probably have the logical question that hits a lot of folks. What should I shoot? Obviously you're gonna be making an investment in time and you're gonna be putting in a lot of effort into actually getting this content together, but you might wanna make sure that that content actually has a market. So Dennis, I know that the world is a very diverse place. There are many things that we can possibly shoot but let's start with categories that tend to do well on Adobe Stock. What are some of the areas that there's a lot of demand for? Sure, there's always going to be a lot of demand for a variety of, of topics. In particular, I think lifestyle. And the reason why lifestyle is so important is that styles are always changing. Right now, we're kind of winding down maybe on men with facial hair, right? <laughs> and ponytails. But, right, and ponytails. <laughs> um, but it was one that lasted for a, a, a number of years, right? right? So five years from now, let's say that we're all back to clean shaven. I've never been much of a facial guy myself. But um, then the, all the content that right now is very exciting and, and mm -hmm. you know authentic, and that's one of the key things about Adobe Stock is shooting authentic content, content that is real, that is today. But um, making sure that lifestyle, the, the, the fashions are going to change. The shirt that I'm wearing right now, five years from now, mm -hmm. uh, will probably not be in fashion, right? right? So those lifestyle is always changing. Now the downside of that is that it is always changing, right? right. So the, the, the shelf life of a, of a good lifestyle clip may be a little bit shorter. Now in comparison, things like wildlife, nature, are kind of always evergreen, but they're... A great shot of a bald eagle isn't going to change a lot from 20 years from now. That's right. And if you're shooting it in 4K, you're really uh, you know, future-proofing yourself for a long, long time. Now, that said, how many people need bald eagles outside of Independence Day, and, right. as, as an example? So the sales on that might be a little bit slower over the course, but it'll be steady, and it'll, be, uh, it'll have a longer shelf life. Some other categories that are super valuable, that are interesting and very um, in demand would be things like business. Certainly harder subjects such as uh, science mm -hmm. uh, can also be uh, important. And then perhaps not necessarily a category in and of itself, but aerial drones obviously have been huge there. So, and there's a large appetite for uh, aerial drones as well as time-lapse, mm -hmm. slow-mo, things like that. So that's interesting because uh, aerial photography and time-lapse photography are also two areas that a lot of people who feel more comfortable shooting stills can gravitate towards right. because it's a nice entryway into that. It's sort of a, a gateway step to shooting video. Yeah, and, and I think one of the great opportunities is for photographers to be able to kind of pivot mm -hmm. and switch that DSLR switch over to motion. Now, it's not quite that simple, but... But it's not nearly as hard as it used to be. You, no. you can use the same camera and the same lens. You really can, and you're getting all the advantages of the DSLR world, the shallow depth of field to compose your shot, the great autofocus in modern cameras, and you're getting the opportunity to do, again, something that's telling a story. The thing about slow motion and time lapse in particular is they're telling a story in a single clip. Like, mm -hmm. the motion itself is telling a story, and that, again, is what customers want. To that end, uh, you know, if a photographer is switching to the world of video, mm -hmm. they don't have to worry as much about shots cutting together necessarily. Mm -hmm. They don't have to worry about great sound, right? As most stock clips are silent. Correct, right. And that's an important thing. So we need to, and this is maybe we cover this in the, in the technical bit a, a little more, but um, audio is important, right? So if I wrote a song mm -hmm. and that song happens to be playing on the radio as you're shooting it, well, there's, there's intellectual property rights to that song. So you either keep it silent or you have ambient noise. So for example, your bald eagle makes a nice, wonderful screech and your mm -hmm. microphone picks it up. That's awesome. But otherwise, silence is totally fine too. Okay. Now, we talked a little bit about lifestyle, medical, science. Is there any good way to keep up on some of the trends? Does Adobe publish anything about sure. Uh, areas of growth or as customers are doing searches, you know, do you communicate back to contributors, hey, there's a lot of interest in this and we need more content on these things? Yes, the Adobe blog is a great outlet for all of that. Um, we're publishing content and blog articles and information about what content wanted. Uh, we also have for 2018 visual trends, right? So we will have six visual trends. Mm -hmm. We'll be publishing those bi-monthly. There'll be a whole bunch of content that surrounds that. Um, it's giving a person an idea that is interested in shooting stock 
Where do I need to go? What are the things that are emerging that are going to be those next trends that are going to be the hot categories for people to shoot in? So we're very much trying to do the best job that we can to inform contributors and potential contributors about the content that's needed, the content that people want. Excellent. And as people sort of get into this more, is there any way that they can get feedback on what is doing well in their library? I, I imagine there's a bit of a control panel where people can sort of log in and track their sales, their views. What sort of information do you give back to contributors so they can become more intelligent about their process of selling? Yeah, so the contributor portal is really the place for people to start. So it's at contributor.stock.adobe.com. And that's where you're going to be uploading content, you're going to be doing things like keywording, uh, you're going to be able to see the views and the items that are sell sold. Um, if you're going to take a payout, in other words, cash in the, the, the credits that you've earned, all of that's going to be done through the contributor portal. So, and we're going to be continually adding new features as the product and service develops so that we're going to get more sophisticated reporting, more feedback in terms of, hey, this content is really performing well. So that's the place to go. We've got a lot of great information there today, but a lot more coming in the future. And one last thing for this section, when people are trying to figure out what to shoot, I think a lot of things that people forget about is that they'll look at a scene and they'll see one shot but a video editor might need four or five angles to tell that story, or they might not want the wide shot, they might want a medium shot sure. or a close up. How can someone who's not as experienced with this think through making sure they have adequate coverage? Any good tips or advice on making sure you really shoot the heck out of a scene to get all yeah. the opportunities? I think, you know, looking at other resources, materials, you know, I'm sure you've done some of those things and the, and the web is full of, uh, of different resources, but again, Adobe's publishing a lot of blogs, but in terms of, you know, the c c customer experience, mm -hmm. uh, if I've shot, um, you know, you and I in a, in a stock sense, um, I would do a close up, I'd do a medium, I'd do a medium wide and start pulling out left, right. Uh, what's nice about that on the customer experience, like let's say I clicked on the details of a clip that looks interesting based upon the search terms that I hit. Now me as the contributor, when the person sees that shot at the bottom, they're going to see a whole bunch of other shots from the same series. So it's inviting. We're trying to help the customer find the right shot, the perfect one, or if they need a number of shots, you know, maybe they need the close up and they need the kind of the, the setback or the wide shot, both, then the customer is going to be able to see those. So your search results will actually make it easy for them to find more shots of that specific location with those actors because it actually recognizes that data, right? Right, absolutely. Very cool. And if you do have a location, you mentioned lifestyle versus business. Having people do a wardrobe change could be important. We might be having a conversation at a coffee shop and if we're wearing our business clothes, it could have been a business meeting, and if we just switch to our sweatshirts, it could be two friends catching up for a cup of coffee. Exactly. It's the same actors, right? Yeah. and even just a change in lighting in the location. We've noticed, for example, that if you light something one way and you put coffee cups out, it's a coffee house. If you just change the lighting a little bit and you swap that for beer mugs, yeah. it's a bar. Yeah. It's yeah. the same location with yeah. the same actors. So as you get creative, you know, again, as you're developing your craft, you're thinking about the shooting, not only is it great experience for how to become a better cinematographer, mm -hmm. the little advanced planning will pay you back in spades when you become a contributor on stock. Thanks, Dennis. And in our next episode, we're going to talk about some of the technical specs you need to know. How should you be shooting video? What file formats do you need to upload? Is there anything you should do to the clips before you submit them? So we'll cover some of that next.